Today's lesson is called Etiquette, an Exercise in Character. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Roger, as always, and today we're going to continue talking about everyday etiquette. It's an exercise in character. You can be an outstanding member of society if you follow these guidelines for day-to-day -day behavior. And, of course, we know people here in Taiwan are pretty polite. You already pretty much know about this stuff, but uh, perhaps some of these rules or these guidelines are unknown to you, especially nowadays when we have these devices that are making noise and stuff. We kind of need to come up with a whole new set of rules for everyday etiquette. And last time, of course, we talked about a couple of things here: respecting other people's sound space, keep your noise to a minimum, and be prepared when you're ordering in a restaurant. There you go. Now I've got one bone to pick there, Roger.、Mm -hmm. I think that etiquette and manners. Well, the idea remains the same. The world's changed. It's true. We've got smartphones and devices all over the place, but the rules of etiquette. And manner, they're not going to change. They should still be based on mutual respect of other people. So when we said respect other sound space, that wasn't a rule that had no basis in basic consideration for other human beings. Just because the world has changed doesn't mean that you don't need to respect other people or that we have to develop new rules. Okay, if you've got your phone and you're being too loud, you're going to offend other people. Or disturb them. So, turn the phone down. Put it on mute. Use your headphones. That way, you're showing others that you are considerate, that you care about them, and that you respect them. You're showing them that you have character. And yes, character, respect for others, being considerate and thoughtful. These are eternal values. Yes, the world changes, but these don't. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Put your phone away in social situations. Whether you're enjoying a family dinner, having coffee with friends, or attending a class lecture, your focus needs to be on the people you're with. So ditch the phone and resist the urge to check your messages. This can deepen your relationships with the people in your life. You can think about it this way: paying attention to your loved ones sends the message that they matter to you, while neglecting them in favor of an app shows they're less important than whatever you're doing on your phone. Hello, 各位好。第一部分我们看到一个片语 put away， 表示将点点点收起来、收拾或储存。用法为 put away 加名词，或是 put 加代名词或是名词加 away。例如 ，Yvonne put away the albums of old family photos where they couldn't be damaged or stolen. Ivan 把家族老照片的相簿收到不会受损害或被偷走的地方。另外 ，put away 除了上面的意思外，还可以用来表示把点点点送进监狱。我们可以说 ，The man was put away for years because he stole a car. 那个男人因为偷车而坐牢好几年。接着，我们看到一个名词 lecture， 指授课、演讲。像是 a free lecture about modern art was given at the art museum last Saturday. 上周六美术馆有一场关于现代艺术的免费讲座。另外 ，lecture 除了上面的意思，还可以当动词，指教训、教诲。所以可以说 ，My father is always lecturing me about wasting money. 我爸爸总是教训我乱花钱。再来，我们看到一个单字。Ditch 这个字为动词，有抛开、摆脱、丢弃的意思。举例来说 ，Male employees ditch their suits and ties for the new casual dress code. 穿便服的服装新规定让男性员工抛开西装和领带的束缚。另外 ，ditch 除了可以当动词，也可以当名词，指沟渠。我们可以说。Lucy found a wallet in a ditch and brought it to the police. Lucy 在水沟里捡到一个钱包，并把它交给警察
Okay, so let's continue talking about everyday etiquette, and here are some new rules.、Uh, first of all, we're talking about putting your phone away in social situations. Of course, if you put something away, you put it where it belongs, and it's no longer seen.、Uh, of course,、uh, when we're kids and we're done playing with our toys, our parents are going to tell us, "Hey, Johnny, put your toys away. Don't leave them there." On the floor, and if you are in social situations like、uh, going out to dinner with your friends or at a coffee shop having a conversation, you should put your phone away, at least according to etiquette. Although I think nowadays people are not going to do that. That is a ridiculous suggestion. Everybody's got their phone at least sitting on the table. Oh my goodness! My wife's brother is the worst about this. We go out to eat. The guy has got his phone in his hand. The entire time, when the food comes out, he's got to take pictures of the food. He doesn't eat for a while. He has to take the picture, then send it to his friends, and then make some comments on it. Then, with one hand, he eats, and the other, he's checking messages. The phone is never ever put away. And yes, I want to say, hey, put your phone away. We are eating. This is, in fact, a social situation. So. Respect us, okay, and go ahead and put your phone away. Talk to us, and not that electronic device in your hand. Yeah, put it away. Put it where it belongs when you're not using it. Yeah, don't put it in your pocket. That's kind of like putting it away. I think it's even better to put that in your bag in that pocket that is made for a smartphone or something like that. Anyways, yes, put your phone away in social situations. Whether you're enjoying a family dinner. Having coffee with friends or attending a class lecture, your focus needs to be on the people you're with. So ditch the phone and resist the urge to check your messages. So ditch the phone, get rid of it, put it away. Well, that would be nice, but、uh, I don't think anybody is going to do that. Everybody accepts the fact that people are going to keep their phones out, at least here in Taipei. It's different in my hometown. It's kind of interesting to go back there and actually sit down and have a meal with my family or friends. And nobody's got their phone out. It's really, really strange. We actually have to talk to each other face to face. It is so weird. But in any case, yes, we're saying that you should put that phone away in social situations. If you're having a family dinner, having coffee with friends. Or having a class lecture. Lecture, of course, is when you're in class, but、uh, usually you're in an auditorium or something. At least in university, the lecture was in an auditorium where the professor would be speaking the whole time, and then you had your lab classes at another time. Anyways, let's move on. The next sentence says, "This can deepen your relationships with the people in your life." I.e. Ditching your phone and actually paying attention to what they have to say to you, this can be good for your interpersonal relationships. Yes, this can deepen your relationships with the people in your life. If you have a real conversation with them, you might be able to connect with them on a deep level. How about that? So yes, ditch your phone. Ditch your phone. That's good advice here, at least in some circles. But of course, there's always the temptation to consult your phone for information that might add to the conversation or something like that. So again, this seems to be something that is very difficult to ask people to do. But in any case, you can think about it this way: paying attention to your loved ones sends the message that they matter to you, while neglecting them in favor of an app. Shows they're less important than whatever you're doing on your phone. Oh, that's good advice here. Of course, if you're willing to pay total attention to the other people at your dinner table, you're giving them a message. You're sending them a message that they are more important than your phone. You're not neglecting them in favor of an application or an app here. To neglect. Means that you don't pay attention to something that you should be paying attention to. You don't want to neglect your house because after a while,、uh, moisture will start to destroy the walls and the paint will fall off. You need to continue to maintain your house. You cannot neglect your house or you cannot neglect your car. You need to change the oil what every five thousand miles or something like that. There you go. Don't neglect your house. Okay. Don't neglect your car. 
make sure you maintain your car and your house, or like Roger said before, they will fall into disrepair. Yes, if you neglect something, you kind of disregard it. You don't show this thing the attention or the love that it deserves or that it requires. You kind of fail to follow through on your responsibilities to something or something. And yes, you can neglect people. You can neglect your loved ones. When you're talking to someone about their feelings and you love this person, and then you say, hey, hold on a second while you're pouring your heart out. I'm going to check my Facebook. That's going to send them the message that you don't care about them. And that's not a good thing. And yes, maybe Wikipedia can help you get to the bottom of something or to fact check something. But hey, Rule of thumb. This is a good rule of thumb. Just get rid of the phone while you're talking to someone that you love. Just make sure that you show them the respect that they deserve as being a person who's important to you or as being one of your loved ones. Don't neglect them. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. When we come back, though, we'll be learning another rule. It's called Think Before You Post, and we'll be talking more about what a rule of thumb is. So go ahead, folks, take a break. But don't worry, we'll be back soon. Think before you post. The rule of thumb for posting messages on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media is to ask yourself whether you would say them among your family and friends. Harsh and hateful words come easy when you are anonymous. Were you to be exposed as the writer, would you feel ashamed of your post? If so, hit the delete button and don't look back. Rule of thumb saving at least 10% of your monthly income is a rule of thumb when preparing for retirement. Under somebody's thumb, like Brian has been under his girlfriend's thumb since they began dating. Brian has been under his girlfriend's thumb since they began dating. Brian has received a large sum from an anonymous donor. 該慈善機構收到來自匿名捐款者的一大筆錢。另外, anonymous 還可以用來形容無特色的、無個性特徵的。我們可以說, In the crowded city, Brett felt like just another anonymous face in the crowd. 在這擁擠的城市中, Brett覺得自己只是人群中另一個不起眼的面孔。最後,我們看到形容詞, ashamed, 用來指感到羞愧的。像是, Sonia is ashamed that she told a lie to her best friend. Sonia 另外常常用, be ashamed of 加名词来表示对点点点感到羞愧。我们可以说, Ellen was ashamed of her brother when she learned he had been arrested. Ellen在听到自己哥哥被逮捕时感到很丢脸。All right, again, we're talking about some uh, advice for etiquette uh, in your everyday life. And today, so far, we've talked about keeping your phone away, putting it away in social situations. And now we're going to talk about something called thinking before you post. Of course, if you're on your phone or on the Internet, oftentimes you post something on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. But our advice here is to think before you post. Uh, this is kind of similar to the English phrase, look before you leap. Before you do something, you need to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Otherwise, it will be too late and you'll be in big trouble. So think before you post, look before you leap. And the rule of thumb for posting messages on Facebook, Twitter, 
or other social media is to ask yourself whether you would say them among your family and friends. So yes, you might be kind of emotional about something, and you're going to think, "Oh, I, I really need to post this right now." But stop first and think, "Okay, would I say this to my family or my close friends?" You need to think about it first before you post. Otherwise, you might regret it. And this is not a bad piece of advice. Yeah, you would usually not say anything nasty or terrible to your family or to your friends. Okay, so if you would say something among your family or friends, it's probably okay to post on a public forum or to post on Facebook, Twitter, or some other social media site. So this is a good rule as far as manners are concerned. Okay. You respect your family and your friends, so you'll only say respectful things. So on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media sites, only post things that would be okay for your family or friends as well. You respect them, so anything that would be okay for them is going to be okay for someone else as well. This is going to be something that you respect. Respectfully saying, or respectfully posting, I should say, on Facebook, Twitter, or social media. That is, if you follow this rule of thumb, this rule of thumb, i.e., to think before you post. Now, that's the rule of thumb to think before you post. But what's a rule of thumb? A rule of thumb is a principle or a rule that people follow because of experience or maybe tradition. Okay, they don't follow this rule because of theory or because of the law or anything like that. People just think this is a good idea. It works in experience, so it must work for everyone all the time. What a great rule of thumb! It's a general guideline, basically a good rule of thumb, and here it goes on to say: harsh and hateful words come easy when you are anonymous. Harsh means mean, and hateful also means mean, but full of hate. And you can say those things when other people don't know who you are. That's what anonymous means without a name. You're unknown. So of course, if nobody knows who you are, hey, it's easy to say mean things to other people. Were you to be exposed as the writer, or if someone found out that you were the person who wrote this post, would you feel ashamed of your post? Would you stick your head in the ground like an ostrich? To be ashamed, of course, means you regret something and you're embarrassed by what you've done, and you wish you could,、uh, you know, go back in time and change it. But in this particular case, you can't. You might be ashamed. You might be embarrassed at what you did. There you go. If you're ashamed of something, you feel guilty. You're guilty or embarrassed by something that you've done. That's all there is to it. Anyways, if so. Hit the delete button and don't look back. Okay, i.e., get rid of what you just wrote there. Better yet, don't post it at all. That's what I would say. Anyways, yes, here we have the word delete. Okay, if you delete something, you obliterate it, you erase it, you get rid of it completely and totally. Yeah, very often we use that delete button on our computer to get rid of something that we have written. You can also clean an entire hard disk when you do so, and you remove all the data from that hard disk. You are deleting all of that data. All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up our lesson on etiquette. Remember that in the end, it is all about the golden rule: treating others as you would have them treat you. Etiquette may seem to be about minor things, but it's the little things that count, and how you handle them says the world about your character. Okay, of course, as you know, there are lots of other rules for everyday etiquette, but we've been dealing with some that have to do with modern times, especially if we're talking about technology, posting things on the internet, or getting together with friends and stuff like that. But remember that in the end, it is all about the golden rule, which is treating others as you would have them treat you. I think it's also phrased as "do unto others as you would have them do unto you." I think、uh, someone said the way the Chinese phrase this is: "Don't do something to someone else that you don't want them to do to you." It's basically the same thing. Treat other people good, and they'll treat you good as well. There you go, the golden rule. That's eternal. Anyways, etiquette may seem to be about minor things, but it's the little things that count. 
and how you handle them says the world about your character. So there you have it. Etiquette is, in fact, an exercise in character. All right, folks, with that, our lesson is complete. It's in the books, and it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. Anonymous,他是完形容匿名的,不记名的,不知名的。那我们就来学他的字首字根。好,字首A或是AN表示无或是否定。那么字根ON,YM, 这部分表示字或是名字，那么O-U-S它是形容词字尾，把这三部分合在一起，没有名字，那就表示是匿名的。那我们顺便补充其他有相同字根的单字哦。第一个叫做synonym，S-Y-N-O-N-Y-M，好
Okay, here's our discussion starter for today, and the question is: What other etiquette rules do you think are still important today? I think that table manners are still important, and this goes beyond not using your smartphone at dinner. Okay, let's take the case of putting your elbows on the table. You might think, big deal. I put my elbows on the table all the time, but think about this. If everyone put their elbows on the table all the time, you'd be bumping elbows and in, in conflict, and you might even tip over the table. So yes, if everyone did this and showed the proper respect to one another, I think that our dining situations would be all that more serene. Well, we should all respect others by keeping ourselves clean. Because if we bathe every day and we wash our hands and we cover our mouths when we sneeze, that way other people won't suffer because of us. They won't have to smell disgusting smells and they won't get sick. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways. I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.